to be honest, I don't really know. I don't, but Jesus knows. Um, I've had a couple of things on my heart that I ha- I did prepare. Don't worry. I did spend time with the Lord and I asked him for his heart and all those kind of things. Don't worry. I'm not just like up here, like going to be throwing anything around. I did prepare. I have a couple of things that I felt like the Lord um, had dropped into my heart. And it's crazy because it was along the lines of Pastor Shar, what she was talking about. And I just, I just feel like the Lord is after our hearts. He's after the affection of our hearts. And as I was preparing for tonight, I, um, I mean, I was, I was, I was having a heck of a time, let's just say, but I felt like the Lord said, I want your affection. You want direction, but I want your affection. And I was shook because, I mean, we can put a message together and we can, we can, we can do anything, but the Lord is just interested in our affection. He's not, he's not interested in the things that, that we can do if they're not from a place of loving him first. Jesus is looking for our hearts, and I believe that our hearts are at war. There's like a war happening for our hearts. Um, They're being torn between things of the world and things of the spirit, and Jesus wants every ounce of our being. And when we can turn away from the things that our, our flesh desires, the spirit's going to consume us. He is a devouring fire, Hebrew says. He is a holy and devouring fire. And I don't know about you, but a fire consumes. And the further in we go, the the deeper we go with the Lord, the less we can bring with us, the less we can take with us. And yeah, but he's, I said this, I think I said this last time, I said this a while ago, but he's poking and prodding at at areas in our heart to, to remove those things inside of us. You know, if you ever, um, like iron sharpens iron, when we're being, when we're being, we feel like a resistance, it's because there's something inside of us that the Lord wants to remove so that we can go deeper because the deeper we go, the less we can carry. The deeper we go, the less we can have inside of us. That's not of him. He's poking and prodding at things inside of us to get those things out so that we can experience more of him because he's a holy and devouring fire, and we need to let go of those things. We need to let go of those things. We need to let go of those mindsets. We need to let go of those perspectives that are not heavenly focused. We need to let go of those things. In critical hearts, we need to let criticism go. I believe that, I believe that the Lord is wanting to remove criticism from hearts. I believe that we sometimes mask criticism as discernment, and that is very dangerous. That is a very dangerous place to be to say that I am discerning such, but it's actually coming from a critical spirit. It's not, that's a no-go, and it will actually hinder our growth. It'll hinder what we experience when we come into the presence of God. He wants to consume that. And Pastor Shara said it in the past that he can only consume things that are surrendered to him. He can only consume things that are surrendered to him. We're only going to be able to go so far until we need to lay those things at his feet. He's interested in the affection of our heart, not the things that, not anything else. He wants the affection of our heart. He's interested in our heart. He's interested in our love. And I don't know about you guys, but I think that sometimes I make excuses for the condition of my heart. I make an excuse for the condition of my heart. Well, you don't know how bad that person hurt me. You have no idea. Okay, but let's not make excuses. Let's allow the Lord to heal that and let's move forward. Let's not make excuses for the conditions, 
of our hearts, but let's let God break the barriers in our hearts so that we can experience and feel and enjoy the presence of God. That's it. Do you guys have your Bibles? We're going to turn in our Bibles to Luke 7. I did have this in my notes before Pastor Shar said it, but it's not the same. It's not the same. It's the same, but it's not the same. You know what I mean? Luke 7, starting in verse 36. I have to hold the Bible up to like right by my eyes so that I can read it. I'm only 24. Jesus. Jesus is the healer. He's He can do anything he wants. So if you are wearing glasses, he can heal us. Um, yeah, okay, so a sinful woman forgiven. We're going to start in... We're going to start in verse 36. It says, one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. And behold, a woman of the city who was a sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at a table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment. And standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, note that he said this to himself. In some translations, I think that he might've just thought it, but he said it to himself. If this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering him, said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, say it, teacher. And he goes on to talk about um, canceling out the debts. And he, we're going to pick up in verse four, in 44. Then turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house and you gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But he who is forgiven little loves little. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. The man... The Pharisee, he scoffed. He was like, you are going to, do you know who that woman is? Because of criticism, because of the condition of that man's heart, he missed who was sitting in his house. Because of the condition of that man's heart, he missed who was sitting in his house. But because of the condition of that woman's heart, she experienced freedom. She experienced freedom, a a measure of freedom that you can't experience when you have a condition of your heart that is similar to this man's. Me, this is for me. We, Jesus is longing for our affection. She was forgiven because she loved much. Because she loved much, the condition of her heart, the posture of her heart. Jesus is after our hearts. And there's a war over our hearts. There's a war over the affections of our hearts. What are we giving our, our affection to? We will become what we behold. And this lady was at his feet. We will become what we behold. I want to be like Jesus. You know, in 1 John, it talks about if you are in Christ, we must live like he did. We must live like he did. Everything that he did was love. Everything that he did was love. And he wants to uproot those things. It says in Matthew that anything that is not planted by the Father will be uprooted. That means that anything that's inside of us that's not supposed to be, we'll feel that tension. We'll feel that, that, like, um, that opposition because it's not supposed to be. Jesus wants our love. Single, thine eye be single, solely on him, only Jesus, the affections of our heart. Does that make sense? 
I don't know. That's, I, yeah. Jesus is after our hearts. In 1 Samuel 16, 7, it says, For the Lord sees not as a man sees. Man looks on the outward, but the Lord looks at the heart. In Ezekiel 36, 26, it says, And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I believe that this sounds amazing. This verse is like, yeah, baby, give me a new heart. Give me a new spirit. Put it in me. But... The thing is, is we have to maintain that. We have to maintain the condition of our heart is up to us. We have to maintain a right heart. We have to protect. It says in Proverbs 4.23 that we need to guard guard our hearts above all else because from that flows the wellspring of life. So he gives us a new heart and he puts that inside of us. He'll take out that stony heart, that heart that that doesn't feel anymore because people have done us wrong. I, I have... The reason that this heart, this message was on my heart is because I was realizing that my heart had become numb. My heart had become hard. My heart had become, I wasn't, when I was in the presence of God, it was, I was not um, experiencing it. Like how Pastor Shar was describing it tonight. I was that in for many reasons, whether it was an offense, whether it was unforgiveness, whether it was because somebody did me wrong. I had allowed my heart to become in a place where I wasn't It wasn't soft and pliable. I wasn't experiencing the presence of God, but that is not the design that God has for our hearts. It, it, this is the design that he has is that he, we will have a heart of flesh, a heart that feels, a heart that experiences, a heart that knows that we are close to the heart of God. Because when we, when our affection is solely on Jesus, our hearts will become soft and pliable. The presence, people say that time heals. No, God heals. Time in the presence of God heals. Time, that's what, that's what people say is, oh, time heals. That's an excuse for the condition of our heart. That is an excuse to keep our, the condition of our heart the way it is. Time in the presence of God heals and God heals. That's it. If you feel like your heart is numb, you feel like your heart is hard, you feel like you haven't experienced the presence of God, first of all, ask yourself what Pastor Shar was asked. Ask the Lord if you have anything inside of you that is hindering you from experiencing the presence of God, number one and just get in the presence of God and allow the presence of God to consume your heart and thaw the places inside of you. Those numb places that have, that you, you've like, I can't feel. It's become calloused. That callous is gonna shatter in the presence of God. That's what happens. That is what happens because he's longing for the affections of our hearts. So I'm telling you, it's our job to take care of the condition of our hearts. It's nobody else's responsibility but my own. And, um, yeah, he's jealous for our affection. So if I could have the keys, please. Jesus is longing for the affections of our heart. That's it. We live in a world that it's easy to be distracted and pulled in many different directions. I think even sometimes that can be an excuse. Yeah, I live in a world that's very chaotic. Okay, well, if peace is in you, chaos isn't. So John 14, 27 says that Jesus is giving us the peace. Peace is in us. We have to live in peace. We have to live in peace. We have to choose peace. In a world of chaos, we don't get to say, oh, I live in a chaotic world, so it's really hard for me to, no. We all have the same option. We all have the same choice, and we need to choose peace. We choose peace. Peace is a person. His name's Jesus. And it also says in Romans 8 that Jesus lives inside of us. So, that's cool. You can put two and two together. Yeah, two plus two is four. Two plus two is Jesus. No. <laughs> All right, if I could have you guys stand with me. I'm telling you, I had a heck of a time with this with this tonight. I even slept with my Bible last night. <laughs> 
I was like, okay, Lord, I just need some, I just need some, like I said, direction. I was, I was seeking direction and Jesus didn't want me to be seeking necessarily direction. He wanted me to be giving him my affection. And from the place of giving him my affection, searching for direction is not bad. Don't misunderstand me. That is not what I'm saying. But from the place of giving him my affection, direction comes. From the, from the place of Jesus, from the pla place of being at his feet, everything flows from there. He is the answer. And before I grab my Bible and put it on my, my heart and fell asleep last night, I felt like the Lord asked me this. Are you presenting yourself as the best you can as a pure, blameless, and spotless bride before the king, before your bridegroom? Because I want a laid down lover consumed by me alone. Let us be like the sinful woman who had nothing to lose but to give Jesus everything. And she's a true example of walking in the fear of the Lord and not walking in the fear of man. She didn't care what man thought. She did it anyway. She gave Jesus everything. I prayed for somebody tonight and I said, release that thing that has been consuming you so you can be released. Release it to him, give it to him so you can be released. So the affection of your heart can solely be on Jesus. So if you want to close your eyes with me, and again, I want, like Pastor Shar had us do earlier, let's hold out our hands. And I want you to ask Jesus in your heart. You can even say it out loud. Jesus, what has been having the affection of my heart? Where has the affection of my heart been? What's the condition of my heart? And how did it get there? Is there anybody that I need to forgive? Is there anything I need to release? Let him show you. And some of you might be like, I'm good, but let Jesus be the judge. Let Jesus be the judge of that. So Father God, I thank you for your presence tonight. We choose to lay these things at your feet so that we can give you our attention and our affection, Lord. We thank you for removing removing these things from our from our minds father god that torment we thank you for removing those things from our minds and from our hearts father god we choose to lay them at your feet and not pick them back up again we lay them there and we leave them there and we turn our affection we turn our gaze to you lord jesus i thank you for being an all-consuming fire consuming us from head to toe, Father God. I thank you for consuming the areas in our heart that we haven't felt, we, that have been become numb and calloused and hard. Father God, I thank you for consuming those areas inside of us, Father God, so that we can be released of that. We release so we can be released of that. I pray that your people would experience and feel your presence on a deeper level than they have in a very long time, Father God. I thank you for releasing and for healing hearts tonight in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' name. And for those of you that are like, yeah, that's impossible for me. I bind that lie in the name of Jesus and I speak life over you. I speak life over your mind, Father God, and I thank you that you are encountering those people that, are, that have had those lies. And I thank you for truth flooding their beings right now in Jesus' name, that it can happen for them and that they will experience your presence and that they will have encounters with you and it will be enjoyable. Their life will be enjoyable. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We give you our hearts. We come to you and we give you our affection. We love you much. 
We love you much. We lay aside those things that have been consuming us or trying to consume us. We lay aside chaos and we, we enter into your peace. We choose peace, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If I could have the ministry team come up. And if you need prayer for anything, don't leave without getting prayed for. Don't leave. If you feel like there is like another, like you feel like you need healing in an area or you feel like you need a breakthrough, don't leave without receiving it. Jesus is here and he wants to encounter you.